Happy Tuesday. Glad you're with me today. Hope it's a good day for you. I think it's a good day for me so far. And we'll hope things stay that way. Anyway, glad you're with me. Come on in for a moment. Let's think together for just a little while. It was the spring of 1960, the best I remember. Don't remember things that well. But in 1960, Kendall Elementary School held its annual carnival. It's a fundraiser for the PTA and for the school and so forth. And every year there would be games in the rooms that you play. You buy so many tickets, you go to the rooms. You could, you could fish for something over a curtain. There was a cakewalk, you know. There were carnival games where you'd pop a balloon or, or whatever it might be. They were all over the school. And everyone came. Everyone who's connected with school, people throughout the neighborhoods came. There were a few hundred kids who attended school in that elementary school. And heading the school was a man by the name of Owen Self. Mr. Self had been principal of El Kendall Elementary School for several years. His career as a teacher had brought him to this point and he had become the principal of that school. He was a very nice man, very comfortable man. He was good at his job, very studious, respected by the teachers and loved, and when ultimately he left the school and moved on in his career, he was greatly missed. But Mr. Self was a nice man. Well, anyway, in 1960, when the school carnival was taking place, a family whose daughter had begun school there who had a, a younger son who had not yet begun his school and even had a, a baby daughter at that point, came to the carnival that year. Busy in the crowds, the busy rooms with a lot of people, they didn't realize that somewhere along the line their little boy got separated from them. When he realized that he was separated from his family, he looked around and all he saw were legs, people he didn't know. Going from room to room, making his way down the hallway in the school, he couldn't find his parents, couldn't find his sisters, couldn't find his family, couldn't find anybody that he recognized. And the further he went, the more desperate he became, the more desperate he became, the more upset he became, and ultimately he came to some school doors and went through the outside doors, found himself on some of the steps near an entrance to the school and just sat down, worried that he would never see his family again. For some reason, a man came out those doors. The little boy didn't really look up, but pretty quickly he realized some feet were next to him and a man sat down beside him. He said, what's your name, little boy? And he said, why are you out here? The little boy told him that he was lost from his family, couldn't find them, and he said, I bet we can find them. Come with me. And he took the little boy by the hand, and the little boy took it, and they walked back into the school. In those days, you could do that kind of thing. And so the little boy went with the man hand in hand. They walked down the hallways, and before long, spied his family and rejoined his family. And he found out very quickly that the man who had taken him by the hand, who had worried about the little boy who was outside the school building, worried and frustrated and maybe even crying alone, the man who had brought him back to his family was Owen Self, the principal of the school. I don't know whether somebody told him the little boy was there. I don't know whether he just saw the little boy go through the doors or just happened to be passing by and saw through the windows of the door and saw the little boy out there. But he cared enough. And you know what's interesting is when the little boy got back with his family, the family wasn't really all that worried. They hadn't really paid that much attention. They figured he was around the school somewhere having fun. And after all, he was five years old. He was probably doing fine. And in 1960, you didn't worry that much about it. But Owen Self saw him and brought him back to his family. 
A few years later, Owen Self, who had finished his doctoral degree, Dr. Self moved on from that school, moved on to a more administrative role, maybe a little more prestigious role, and don't remember the details of it. And a few, a few years later, saw an obituary in the newspaper and noticed that Dr. Owen Self, a man in his 60s, had passed away. I couldn't help but think about that little boy and the man who brought him back to his family. As simple as the task was, it was important to that little boy. You know, in Acts chapter 9, Saul of Tarsus. Saul of Tarsus had made a move. He'd become a Christian. He turned from tormenting Christians to preaching Christianity. Made his way to Jerusalem, tried to get in contact and get close to the closest disciples, the apostles of Jesus. But they didn't believe in him. They didn't trust him. And so they rejected him. And there he was, lost. Had to be frustrating. But there was a man by the name of Barnabas, a man we meet in an earlier chapter in the book of Acts, who's given the surname or the name given the name Barnabas, or son of encouragement. A good man. A man who'd sell property to feed the hungry. Anyway, when the apostles rejected Saul of Tarsus, Barnabas went to him, took him figuratively by the hand, brought him to the apostles and said, here's the story. They trusted Barnabas. And because of the trust in Barnabas, they accepted this man, Saul, who was to become one of the greatest missionaries the world has ever known, Paul. And Paul and Barnabas became close. Later, they parted ways, went on their own routes. But Paul was brought to the apostles by the man Barnabas because he was of that kind of heart. Son of encouragement. I think about Dr. Self now and then. I think about that small thing he did. I think about Barnabas and how he brought Saul of Tarsus to the apostles and a door was opened. Sometimes it's just a little task. Sometimes it's just taking someone by the hand for a moment. Sometimes it's an introduction. Whatever it may be, these sons of encouragement make a difference in lives. Think about it. There have probably been some in your life. And I guess the encouragement to you and to me is simply this. Wherever we may find ourselves, let us be the sons and daughters of encouragement for somebody else. Hey, I'm glad you're with me today. And I hope it's a wonderful day for you. And we'll share some more things a little further down the road. Thank you again for being with me today.